on a warm summer's eve on a train bound for nowhere i met up with a gambler we were both too tired to sleep so we took turns of staring out the window at the darkness the boredom overtook us and he began to speak he said son i've made a life out of reading people's faces and knowing what the cards were by the way they held their eyes so if you don't mind my saying i can see you're out of aces for a taste of your whiskey i'll give you some advice so i handed him my bottle and he drank down my last swallow then he bombed a cigarette and asked me for a light and the night got deathly quiet and his face lost all expression said if you're gonna play the game boy you gotta learn to play it right you got to know when to hold them know when to fold them know when to walk away and know when to run you never count your money when you're sitting at the table there'll be time enough for counting when the dealing's done you never count your money when you're sitting at the table there'll be time enough to count when the deal is done listen partner i've been waiting all morning how much longer i told you son they're still working on the boiler uh. <sighs> Probably be ready any time now. Be ready any time. You said that three hours ago. Yeah. Bet even the flies crawl around here. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> May I sit? If you like. Well, thank you. Uh, <clears throat> uh, where are you bound? Sacramento. Not San Francisco? No. But I gather that's where everybody else is going. Oh, oh you bet. The best poker players in the country will be gathered there. Or they'll be coming from all over. New York, Boston, Philadelphia, Chicago, New Orleans. You mean they're going that far just to play poker? Oh, it's to prove who's the best. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You're a poker player. Well, I'm a gambler. You're very young. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I haven't made my full dent yet. But in San Francisco, I will. Ah. <sighs> San Francisco. It's quite a town. <laughs> I'll be glad to show you around. Uh, sorry. Uh, what's in Sacramento? My husband. Oh. Uh, well, uh, ma'am, it's been real nice. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck to you, then. Oh, good luck to you, too. <clears throat> uh, you fellas mind if I sit in? Take a chair. Uh, thank you. the game. Dealer's choice. Five card stud.
like someone to look after my horse, if you would. You taking the train? Yep. Well, why don't you be back for the horse? I'm not back in a week. Sell it. of a good poker player, boy. But you better be careful. Because whatever you're doing, you're doing too good. Hang up. Ready. Here we go. Ooh. Five. See your 20. I'll raise you another 20. Mm, 20. Ten bets. Five. Four. Gentlemen, this little old ace is going to cost you, uh, $50. Where you from, boy? Uh, around. What's your name? Billy Montana. Who taught you to cheat like that, Billy Montana? It's a mighty harsh thing to say, mister. That kid's cheating. Seems he's not the only one cheating in this game. What? Why don't you two take your game somewhere else? <laughs> Imagine them accusing me of cheating. <laughs> oh, you were cheating. You're just better at it than they are. Hey, now, wait a minute. I'll give you this, though. Damn few deal seconds any better than you do. You don't think I can win without cheating? You just try me, mister. With you dealing? No, thank you. All right. We'll use an impartial dealer. Ma'am? You know how to handle a deck of cards? Well, I might. How much money you got? About $300. This won't take long. Cut. What's your game? Five card stud. Nine bets, twenty dollars. Space, Ames Space, Ames Space bets. And I'll see you, $75. Hmm. Don't scare me any.
I don't have that much. How much do you have? Uh, sixty-eight dollars. <throat> pair of eights, but it's sixty-eight dollars. Three eights. Poker's a trade, son, and an honest one. It's fellows like you that give gambling a bad name, like drunks give drinking. Consider yourself lucky. If you were dirty dealing on the Mississippi, you'd be at the bottom of the river by now. Oh, yeah. Never leave a man busted. Take as long as I thought it would. When are we getting out of here? That train has been sitting there panting like a big bull for hours. We're leaving now, boy. Who the hell is that? Mr. Stowbridge. He owns this railroad. He the reason we've been waiting? Like I said, Mr. Stowbridge owns the railroad. from everywhere where are you from doc wherever they play cards honey Checking on the passengers.
Dear Pa, I know you don't know me, but my name's Jeremiah, and I'm your son. I didn't know who my father was till a while back, but my mom said you didn't even know there was a me. I didn't want to bother you none, but now, I got no other way. So I'm writing to let you know the fix we're in, Mom and me, and we need your help. Sent off a letter. Hmm. Well, they're not the post office. It says it went to somewhere in Kansas. Who's in Kansas? Who? Brady Hawks. It's no law against writing your own father. Yeah. So she told you. I kept asking. What'd you tell him in the letter? Nothing. Told him where to find you. you told him about me. Huh? You tell me now what you wrote down in that letter. Let him be. You put him up to this. What? You wrote Hawks a letter. I want to know what he said. Well, that's Jeremiah's business. Not if it brings Hawks here looking. And you'll beat it out of him, won't you? <laughs> if I have to. You get out of the way. No. You talk to uh, me, boy. No. Run, Liza, Jeremiah, let... run! Let go, Liza! Let go! Go! down by the creek till it got dark. Ruth, did he hurt you? Hurt me, no. Jeremiah! What did you write in that letter? I told him that we needed his help. He's coming, I know he is. You have to leave, Jeremiah. I don't know what Ruth will do. Then we'll both go. I can't. Why? If Ruth thought I was going to meet Brady Hawks, I can do us more good staying here. There's a town called Santa Rhea, east of here. You take that. I 
you to take the stage tonight. You go to Mrs. Carlson's rooming house. You tell her who you are. She'll remember me. But what about my father? If he's coming, he has to come through there. You watch every train that comes in and every man that gets off it. He's a big man, Jeremiah. Handsome. He wears a beard. He hurt his leg during the war. I heard he uses a cane now. You'll know him right off. Then we'll be coming for you? No. You tell him not to come, because it'll only get him killed. And tell him to take you with him, wherever he's going. And you tell him I'll find you. You understand? Yes, sir. Brady Hawks, going up and down the Mississippi and all the way to San Francisco. <sighs> I sure hope you give me another chance to play once we get there. I'm not going to San Francisco. Well, where are you going? Now, that's none of your business. You stung me pretty hard back there, Mr. Hawks. If I hadn't come along when I did, You'd be in one hell of a fix right now. But one thing for sure, you'll have to play your poker straight from now on. They'll be playing for big money in San Francisco, and I needed a stake. So I, I bent the rules a little. Bent the rules a little? Better words, cheated. Well, I can play well, Mr. Hawks, without cheating. And I intend to be the best. Where are you from, kid? What difference does that make? Where? The Badlands? Farmer. Uh, maybe. Farm boy, headed for the light. Anxious to play your hand in the big city. Better off farming. Mm -hmm. That sort of life is short and full of blisters. Gambling. Mm, that's a way to travel and see things. <laughs> I've gambled a lot of towns. I've read a lot of faces. Gambling can take hold of a man. You gotta be able to walk away from it. Well, I've done pretty good so far. I've been around. But not long enough to see what I've seen. Kid, I've seen cowboys gamble their saddles. Loggers, a winner's wages. I've seen men put up the deeds to their homes and their businesses and their futures. I've seen those same men blow their brains out after losing everything they own. And heaven on earth is a Mississippi riverboat. <laughs> you sure got the fever, don't you, kid? <laughs> Any gambler caught cheating better be ready to forfeit his hide. Thanks for the advice. Still, I hope someday we play. Wouldn't mind taking you down a few notches. A lot of men have tried. Mr. Stowbridge, Jennifer Reed, Mrs. Jennifer Reed. Mrs.? Tell her I'd like her to join us. Yes, sir. 
I propose a toast, ladies and gentlemen. Here's to good luck in San Francisco. Excuse me, ma'am. Mr. Stowbridge would like you to join his party. I don't know Mr. Stowbridge. Seems he knows you, miss. Mrs. Tell Mr. Stowbridge thank you. I'm not interested. I'm afraid he insists. I have a husband. I don't think he'd approve. When Mr. Stowbridge wants something, he usually gets it. If I were you, I'd do as he asks. I told you. I'm a married woman. My husband is a very influential man. Make it easy on yourself. I don't think she wants to go to your party. I'd stay out of it, mister. Mr. Stolbridge runs this train. In fact, the whole railroad. Let's go. Oh. Oh. the gun. I'm gonna get your head, kid! I don't think the lady wants to go to your party. party, did you? Sometimes it kind of gets away from me, and I... <laughs> so pretty. What if Brady does come? What? Never count on that, do we? See, I think... I think we build up too much here. Just to let him come and take it and... You know, I, I don't want to stay awake every night looking over my shoulder at these shows. You can understand that, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Where's the boy? I'm not saying. You can beat me into next week, I'm not telling you. Why? Because you'd hurt him. Well, I'm sending men out, track Jeremiah down, bring him back here. Roof, if you hurt him, you'll have Brady Hawks down your throat for sure. And me too. I'll come after you, I swear I will. I don't know, boy. I think it's somewhere up there outside the gate. Oh, 
over here, folks, in about an hour. Now we take on some water. I'd all stay aboard if I were you. You're not getting off, are you? Oh, I thought I'd just take a little walk around the platform. This is a town I think you could afford to miss. Well, I can't afford to pass it up. <laughs> There's a saloon with a poker sign out there. I have to give it a try. I wouldn't do that. Why? What kind of people would be in a town like this except dirt scratchers and sheep herders, right? I mean, what else could they do? Just wait for a fellow like you to get off the train. <sighs> Wish me luck. <laughs> Look, we just blew in. <laughs> you looking for company? I'm afraid I haven't got the price. Just yet. Well, you come see me when you do. <laughs> Maybe nothing. Welcome. You off the train? That's right. Good. Good. Not many get off. <laughs> looking for a game? Uh, no, no. I'm just looking around. <laughs> well, I best be getting back on the train. Nice to see you. Hell, boy. Be an hour before that train pulls out. Now, you boys don't mind if this uh, young fella sits in? See you make your train. Howdy. How you doing? Deal. Get you a drink, Mrs. Stowbridge? Yes, a glass of burgundy would be very nice. Three jacks. <sighs> nice town. 
The only reason anyone comes here is because he's running. And nobody stays. Unless he has to. Interest in town. Sorry. Paris. Well, gentlemen, that's my train. <laughs> this knife ain't no charm bracelet, son. Hey, look, fellas, uh, keep it, huh? I tell you what, you keep the money and divvy it up amongst yourselves and buy yourself some drinks, all right? <laughs> I was, I was just playing for fun anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I gotta be going. It's a little nice meeting you. What's the hurry, son? I mean, like you said yourself, it's a nice town. No. No interest in town. What's holding us up? One of the passengers is missing. What do you mean, missing, Mrs. Reed? He's still in town. Conductor, do you know anything about this? Yes, sir, Mr. Stowbridge. I sent old Buck over to look for him. He's cornered in the saloon by four cutthroats. They're trying to decide who gets to kill him. Well, didn't anybody warn him? He was warned. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. We can't just go off and leave him. Aren't you going to do anything? Well, it's all you're doing. He's in there in the first place. He wouldn't have even gone if you hadn't taken all of his money. He was warned. He called it. There's nothing he can do. Conductor, you get this train on the move. Yes, sir. Stowbridge, we're not leaving the kid. I said there's nothing you can do. Want a bet? Mr. Brady Hawks, Doc Palmer says you're a mighty fine poker player. I suggest you stick to your cards. A thousand dollars. Five minutes. Make it ten. Ten it is. You don't get them back here by then? We're pulling out. Starting now, Mr. Hawks. Stick them, you like. Stick them. Hey, watch that scurvy one on your left, boy. He's sneaky. <laughs> Started without you. Started what? The party. Bartender, give this man a drink. Hey, kid! 
Hey, kid, where you been? Everybody's been looking for you. Yeah, we've all been missing you. They've been saying, where is that nice looking young fella? You better come on with me now. We gotta be going and you almost missed that trip. We're gonna have one more drink and then we're going to that train. Mister, if I were you, I'd go now without the kid. Certainly. There's absolutely no reason for you to be hostile. Would you like to have a drink? That's an ugly beard. How'd you like me to part it for you real neatly with this little derringer? Don't do it. Do what he says. Get their guns, kid. Throw them in the pickle barrel. And you, move over with the rest of them. Come on, kid. Uh, I won this money fair and square. Come on. Ah, little old hand got only holds two bullets. And four of us. <laughs> Two shots, we're gonna cut both of you up into fish bait. <laughs> Question is, which of the two of you are willing to take the bullets? So the other two can do the cutting. Let's go, kid. This is the second time today you've come to my rescue. I borrowed it from that nice man over there. He seemed to have had enough. That nice man seems to have had enough for all of us. Sit down. You looked like you were in a lot of pain. It used to be worse. There was a time I couldn't even walk on it. Some folks thought I never would. Seem to do all right now. If it weren't for you, that young man would be dead. And if it weren't for you, I would have never gone in after him. <laughs> he's not strong on brains. But he's not short on guts either. You'll learn. <laughs>
Town seems tame enough, huh? I buy you some breakfast? Sure you got the price? I believe I do. No, thank you. I've got some business to take care of here. I'll take you up later, though. Yeah, sure. Figure while I'm here, I might as well buy myself that gun. It's good thinking. What are you doing, boy? Um, looking for you, sir. Looking for me? Yes, sir. Jeremiah? Well, I reckon I'm your father. Does your mother say why she stays? She says she already left one man. But I think she's afraid. She ever tried to leave? Yeah. A couple of times. But he'd find us, or she'd go back. What is it, boy? You seem kind of skittish about me. Up till a couple of days ago, I, I thought it was you who ran out on me. Did she tell you that? No. She said it was her who ran out at you. Didn't even know who my father was till a while back. Well, why, after all this time, did she finally tell you about me? Because of Ruth. I, I guess she thought if I ever needed anybody. I know Mom ran out on you. But why didn't you try and find us? Didn't you ever wonder what I was like? Didn't you ever want to see me? Jeremiah, I didn't even know I had a son till I got your letter, and, and I'm here. You mean Mom never told you about me? That's right. Why? I figure she had her reasons. Where is your mother now? You fixing to see her? Yep. She's still in Yuma. But she doesn't want you to go there. Why? Because Ruth near runs the town. You've got lots of men working for him. Wearing guns? Yes, sir. You still going? Yep. I want to come with you. I want you to stay put in the rooming house till I get back. I got to go, son.
Who's the kid? It's my son. <laughs> you have women strung out all along the rail line, do you? Ah, it's one of the reasons this line of work appeals to me. Kid claims he belongs to you. He does. Let him go. Well, you, you know, I, I couldn't let him stay on the train without. Uh... I'll take care of it. Yeah. Boy, I thought I told you to stay put. Yes, sir. got away from him. You think Hawks is on that train? Oh. Yes, sir. You can bet on that. Well, and all you have to do is just wait for him. No. I want him stopped before he gets here. I'm not on your payroll, Mr. Bennett. It's playing the ones that are. I'm doing the job. How much? I have two men that work with me. We're high. Good. Well, why don't you just name a price? Thanks. When are we going to get to Yuma? Tomorrow. You go to sleep. Okay.
according to the kid. They'll know you're on this train. That means Bennett and his men will be waiting for you. It's about the way I figure it, too. You're going to be good and outnumbered. That Derringer's not going to do it. You pull that trigger twice, that little old gun's going to be emptier in a banker's heart. There's only so many times you can get away running that same bluff. All of a sudden, you're the old wisdom bringer. That's steep odds. Unless you want to jump in and change them. What do you think I am? Local? Beautiful. Oh, yeah, I remember. You didn't even know you had a son. <laughs> I was in a high stakes poker game in Kansas and I got this letter. Wrote out the very same day. What are you going to do when you get there? I don't know. I just know she's in trouble. Why? She must be something quite special. car for a long time now. It's awfully drafty, dusty. It must be quite uncomfortable. Well, since you own the railroad, Mr. Stobridge, why don't you do something about it? I intend to. I'm extending to you my personal invitation to join me in my car. You can freshen up, join me and my friends for dinner, have some drinks. I'm sure you'll find the ride much more comfortable. Thank you, Mr. Stobridge. I'm doing just fine. I insist. So do I. <clears throat> Perhaps you don't remember me. We met in Sacramento. We never met. I even remember where it was. Just leave me alone, Mr. Stowbridge. I still insist. Stowbridge, the lady's with me. And I'm with them. <sighs> Mr. Hawks, you do have the habit of involving yourself in other people's affairs. But since you're a poker player, maybe there's a way to resolve this situation. You already have $1,000 of my money. The least you could do is to give me a chance to get even. Poker game? Poker game. But not for money. For the lady. No. Not for the lady. What have you got against playing for money, Mr. Stowbridge? Who's this? Name is Billy Montana. I know, I know. You never heard of me. But you will. Well, Mr. Montana, I played poker all over the world. I played for lots of different stakes. I find playing for a beautiful woman. Rather an intriguing stake. I'm not going to be a stake in a damn poker game. Besides, Mr. Stowbridge, the lady's already with us. Win or lose, what do we stand to gain? Except money. I say every man sits down for $5,000. You, Brady, Doc Palmer, and myself. All right. My 5000 against the lady. No. 
Not against the lady. Oh, Mr. Hawks, if you're concerned about the lady's virtue, believe me. Hey, you got your game. Fine. Fine. Fifteen minutes. My car. What the hell are you doing? You realize how much money is floating around up there? Thousands. Maybe even a million. Now, you've been around that kind of money, but I haven't. Oh, Brady, we could walk out of there rich men. <gasps> Where are you going to get $5,000? You? From me? <laughs> Brady. No. Uh -uh. Brady, you need a friendly face in there. They're in there laying for you. Could get noisier in the Mexican Revolution, you know. Uh, you do have $10,000, don't you? Kid, I'll tell you what. If you don't make it as a gambler, you'll do real good spreading fertilizer. <laughs> Come on, let's go. See, wait for me up here. I need to talk to the lady. All right. I'm sorry. For what? For getting you into this. I'm a gambler. Might be missing something. Might have a good time. Parties like that bring back old times for me. Those women with them? They're being paid to be there. Chippies, whores, whatever you want to call them. I was one once. Used because I had no choice. Now I do. Three years ago, I got married to a man named John Reed. He was a hell rat like a thousand others. Digging for gold, but he struck it rich, real rich. And he married the prettiest whore in town. <laughs> Suddenly there we were, mixing with the rich, the cream of Sacramento society. <laughs> Even though he needed it worse than me, John thought that. I ought to take on a little polish. Learn to dress and talk like a lady. So he sent me off to a St. Louis finishing school. Two years. I learned everything it takes to make a whore into a lady. It wasn't easy. But I am going back to lady. Yeah, you are. I guess the closer I get to Sacramento, and like Stonebridge will pop up. Once I get off this train, it's all gonna change. How do you mean? Back to the way it was. Those people in Sacramento still just be a whore. Hell with them. I like what I see. Time. You gentlemen know each other? Or of each other? We've met before. Last time was in Chicago. The King's Hotel. Big poker doings, as I remember. But I've never had the pleasure of playing against Mr. Hawks. Welcome. Thank you. 
And this is, um... Uh, Montana. Billy Montana. Oh, yeah, Billy Montana. Take a seat. Yeah. Now, gentlemen, may I introduce Mr. Horace Crown. He's going to be our dealer. Gentlemen. Here now. What do you think you're doing? <clears throat> it's called reading the room, Mr. Stobridge. <clears throat> the game is five card stud, table stakes. If that's all right with you, gentlemen. <clears throat> Lily? New deck, gentlemen. Second deck, gentlemen. Jack of hearts. Three of hearts. Four under to you, Mr. Montana. You still checking out the room, kid, or are you in? <sighs> Ace Queen bets two hundred. Make it five. You're three hundred and three hundred more. Kings win it. Read them and weep, gentlemen. <laughs> Read them and weep. I have a feeling you're going to be just like your father. He's the best. You don't like him much, do you? I haven't known him long. But my mom told me all about him. Does she still love him? Where she talks about him. I think she does. She should have never left him. Well, people don't always do what's best for them. Do you like my father? What kind of a question is that? I am married. Do you love your husband? Will you just deal? Be the kid. What about Hawks? I know. But if the kid's around, he can't be far off. Sam.
I'll see your 200. Not 200, friend. 2,000. Queen high, possible straight. Queen checks. I bet it all. Fifteen hundred. Call. Well, I may not have my straight, but I got myself a king. How'd you know? You just paid to see the cards, boy. Lessons come extra. Yeah, if you don't mind, I'd kind of like to stick around and watch. Diamonds, ten of hearts, ace bets. Ace bets, five hundred. Pair of aces. Seven of hearts. Pair of aces, bet. Pair of aces, bet's a thousand. Five of clubs, nine of hearts, possible flush. Pair of aces, no bet. Pair of aces, bet's 2,500. Let's make it 5,000. You know, even if you got one I'm afraid you got in the hole, you still got to catch another one to make it work. And I'm also afraid the odds are against you. That's why they call it gambling.
25. Three aces. Jack of hearts. Possible flush. Possible straight flush. Three aces, Ben. Just save us some time. Winner takes all. <laughs> He's trying to buy it. <laughs> I don't think so. How do you know? Instinct. Sometimes that's all you have to go on. Farmer. Do you realize what the odds are? He knows what the odds are. Play it through. That's a fool bet, Mr. Stowbridge. I am backing you, Palmer. It's my money. It's my money. Take it, Hawks. Thanks, Doc. My pleasure. You're not leaving, Hawks. Wasn't the deal. We keep playing. For how long, Mr. Stowbridge? Until you finally win? I oh, thank you. George? The man won fair, Mr. Stowbridge. Let it go. He deserves the utmost courtesy. It goes with winning. Hawks, another time. Maybe San Francisco. Thanks, Doc. Lily, you get him the cash. <laughs> Who won? We did it. Oh, that's wonderful, Brady. Lily's collecting the money right now. Hawks. Be still. I guess you know why we're here. Ruth Bennett. That's right. Seems you're making Mr. Bennett a very nervous man. Take him on out. Drinks are on me for everybody! Two. Come on, 
honey. You can go. Oh, what are we celebrating? Well, you might call it a wake. Anybody would know? <laughs> Liza, come in, come in, have a drink. I'm afraid I have some bad news for you, Ruth. Well, Laura, speak up. These people here, my friends. Brady's still alive. <laughs> what are you talking about? Rose and Winters have both been shot. And the half breed's somewhere between here and Benton. But nice try, Roof. Get these people out of here. Get them out right now! No way around it, Roof. You're gonna have to face him on your own. Maybe. You're still afraid of him, aren't you? I can beat him. Remember the last time you said that? Biggest showdown poker game in the history of the territory. He won that hand by bluffing. I should have won. I had to hand. But he beat you. He won't again. Then why are you afraid to face him now? It's the chance you've been waiting for. Or are you afraid because you've never beaten him at anything? I took his woman. Ain't that right? It's not so much that you love me, Ruth, is it? It's that you hate him. I guess a little of both. Jeremiah, if you really want to help, you'll go to Sacramento with Jenny. I'll be along as soon as I can. I'll take good care of him. Brady? It's gonna make you like playing a cold deck. A good gambler never cheats, but he doesn't go against the odds either. That's good advice. <laughs> Just don't see that I have much choice this time. I'd stick around to drive the hearse. San Francisco's waiting. <laughs> You're making good sense for a change. Good luck. You too, kid. I don't want to go to Sacramento. I'm worried about my dad. Me too. Let's go. He's coming. Give me a little drink first, huh? 
Dixieland, I'll take my stand and live and die in Dixie. <laughs> Come on, bartender, whiskey. <laughs> How you doing? Fine. <laughs> the old brown. Well, here's looking at you, partner. <coughs> what the hell? Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so... <laughs> All right, gentlemen, gun belts out on the table. That means you too, partner. That's right. You, out from behind there. Come on, I'll be out there. Come on! All right, come on, get up. Come on, join your friends. Leaves you too. Now the odds are even. Read the room for you. your fight. Yeah, it is. You still carry that Derringer? As I recall, you never... you never liked to use it. It's empty. Are you sure? Fired both shots, and that's all it holds. I reloaded. You didn't have time. She bluffed me a long time ago, but not now. Not again. You call me. You calling me, Ruth? 
You lose again. you for a while. You ought to get to know him. Would you be okay? Yeah. Goodbye, Eliza. Francisco, huh? Come on, you and me make a good team. I got a son to think about now. Well, what's wrong with San Francisco? Ocean Air will do him some good. As a matter of fact, it'll do us both some good. I don't want to raise my son around saloons. We'll send him to a nice school. Besides, poker's all you know. And what else is a gambler with a gimpy leg gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a hell of a bluff you ran back there. I wouldn't have bought it. You didn't have time to reload. I mean, I heard the front barrel. It was empty. And there wasn't time to load the second one either, was there? Was there? Let's just say I ran half a bluff. You got no <laughs> No <laughs> when to fold up. <laughs> Walk away and know when to run. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting. When the deal is done, you got to know when to hold. When to hold. Know when to walk away and know when to run. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting. When the dealing's done, you got to know when to hold up. Know when to fold up. Know when to walk away. And know when to run. You never count your money. When you're sitting at the table, there'll be time enough for counting. When the dealing's done, 